Imagine waking up, reaching for your phone, and realizing you've been logged out of everything. Your emails, your bank account, and even your social media. It's as if you've been erased, and someone else is now you online. Scary, right? This isn't science fiction. It's real, and it's happening to ordinary people. It happened to me. Yes, me. I was so engrossed playing games online when I received an invite to play games. When I joined, the group that was already there told me I was not an alien because I had a nose. I didn't know what they meant by that. So I asked, and they said that every other person that had joined did not have a nose. But since I showed having a nose, I was human. Not too long of my being there, I started receiving hate posts with very nasty remarks. What did I do to receive such hateful words? I asked, and one of them actually told me to do something inappropriate to find out. That was weird. So I immediately reported to my mom, and she had to block my access and log me out for a while. When I got to school the following day, I told some of my friends about it, and they said they were getting bullied in a similar way. One of my friends was really getting bullied, and he started to say he was hated and unloved by everyone. This was a boy who were all sending get well messages when he was sick. Everyone in class loves him as a friend and shows it to him, but what he saw and listened to online temporarily defined how he saw himself. I read a story about a boy who wasn't so lucky to have people around him like I did. When the hate received got too much, one of the monsters behind the screen told him to unalive himself. And guess what? He did. A friend of mine told me how he received an invite and lost all the points and avatars he had saved over the months. This led to him being extremely sad for a couple of weeks because he had lost his account. This might be seen as trivial. However, if not properly checked, could have translated into something bigger and deeper. A classmate of mine told me how he got an invite to play in a private room which culminated to his exposure to inappropriate and adult content. A poor boy who was hurt said that when he was a kid playing a popular game, he joined this 35 HP server and met this dude with an Iron Man skin. His ragdolls made these cool metallic sounds upon dying. You could say he was impressed. He asked in general chat how to get this type of skin, and the server admin told him the model was only for admins, but just this once, he could have it for free. The skin activated for him on the server, and everything seemed fine. But then he wrote that the skin had to be activated on Steam, so it wouldn't disappear. At his helper's suggestion, he installed TeamViewer and gave him access to his computer. He opened Notepad right on his computer and wrote what to do there. To cut the short story even shorter, he gave the hacker his account details, logged in to supposedly activate the skin, and that was how he lost his first Steam account. Now imagine something even worse. You're in the middle of your work day, maybe in a meeting or a call. Your phone rings, it's from home. You answer and your world stops. Your child, your beloved son, has taken his own life. No notes, no warning, just gone. Later, you learn he's been spending time online. He's been talking to someone. Someone who pretended to be his friend. Someone who used his trust as a weapon. Someone who slowly, deliberately broke him with cruel words. This isn't some distant horror story. It's real, and it's happened to parents across the globe. And it can happen to any one of us. Some of us have seen the British movie where a boy stabbed his classmate to death. Till the footage was shown, his parents didn't believe he was capable of such a thing. But then the detective handling the case went to the boy's school to talk to his classmates and got the shocking revelation of how the boy was being called an incel, which led to him stabbing his classmates. As Holocaust survivor Ellie Wiesel said, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. We cannot afford to be indifferent to the dangers we children face online. We live in a beautifully connected world, from smartphones to smart homes, from banking apps to wearable tech. Our lives are surrounded by digital tools that make things easier, faster, and more entertaining. But with that convenience comes a risk. While we worry about data breaches and identity theft, there's another silent, growing threat, one that's targeting our children. The human factor and children online. 
Most cyber attacks don't begin with someone cracking code. They begin with someone cracking trust. Children, bright, creative, and kind are especially vulnerable. They're curious, they're trusting, and they often don't realize that behind a friendly profile picture could be someone with very dark intentions. The cyber criminals send messages like, limited time offer, claim now, or get free games, just click here. They impersonate friends, they create fake websites. Once a child clicks, they're taken to a fake login page, and once they type in their details, it's all over. A friend of mine once lost his account by just accepting an invite to play games. And in some cases, it goes even further. It turns into grooming, into exploitation. As Maya Angelou said, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. Let's help our children believe the signs, recognize danger, and respond early. When innocence meets the internet. Now, let's talk about something uncomfortable, yet vital. Children and online adult content. Most parents still see their child as innocent, unaffected, and unexposed. But the truth? That innocence is under threat. Not because children go looking for immorality, but because immorality finds them. A few innocent clicks, a cartoon video, a free game, a seemingly harmless YouTube link, and suddenly, they're exposed to things they don't even understand. Some sites don't even require age verification. Some hide behind ads. A child might be watching a cartoon, but with one misclick, they're taken somewhere they never even meant to go. And once they've seen it, they can't unsee it. As philosopher Soren Kierkegaard wrote, once you label me, you negate me. The online adult content does just that. It labels the body, reduces it, and objectifies it. The impact. Exposure to adult content at a young age wraps a child's view of love, respect, consent, and relationships. The child begins to see the human body as something to be used, not cherished. It creates shame, confusion, and sometimes even addiction. They begin to watch it in secret, feeling guilt but unable to stop. All the while, their parents think, not my child, my child would never. But research shows that most children are exposed to this between the ages of 8 and 11. Not because they're bad, but because the internet is built to show, not to shield. The silent consequences. Children who are manipulated online often suffer in silence. They stop talking stop playing, their mental health spirals, and in worst cases, they turn to self-harm or even suicide. A 12-year-old girl in the UK took her life after she was blackmailed by a predator she met online. He gained her trust, then he used it to humiliate and destroy her, and her parents found out too late. This isn't fair, it's happening now. A wake-up call for parents. Parents, if you want to protect us as children, you must stop underestimating our exposure. It's not enough to say, my child is too young to know about that because the internet doesn't care how old we are. Children can be exposed to explicit content at any moment. You must face the uncomfortable truth. We children are growing up in a world you didn't grow up in. If you don't guide us, algorithms and strangers will. How can we be helped? Have the awkward conversation. If you don't want to talk to your child about the birds and the bees, respect and online content, someone else will. Two, use parental controls. These aren't foolproof, but they help. Three, build trust. Let children know, I'm here. You can tell me anything and I'll help you through it. Four, teach critical thinking. Help them ask, is this respectful? Would I want my younger sibling seeing this? As C.S. Lewis said, integrity is doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. Teach us children to understand right from wrong, even when we're alone on the screen. Empowering all generations. Cybersecurity isn't just 
about firewalls and passwords. It's also about emotional safety, trust, and awareness. We as children must be equipped, not with tools, but with wisdom. We do not need to fear the internet, but we must understand it. Because as well as technology can connect, it can also deceive, isolate, and devastate if we don't learn how to stay safe. So I ask you, what will you take away from this? Will you change your own habits? Will you talk to your parents today about who you're talking to online? Will you tell yourself that your value is not defined by like, a message, or a follower count? Because every conversation, every click, every action can turn the tide. Cybersecurity is for all of us. Let us build a digital world where children can grow with confidence, connect with kindness, and where safety is not just a feature, but a foundation. Let's protect the minds behind the screen. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.